Welcome! Hi guys! Welcome Welcome back! back. Woo! (laughs) Jinx! Well, just so you guys know, I'm Samrith. This is Myra, Myra, if you guys haven't already been on our channel before. And we do uh, wine and spirits. So we discuss paranormal things and we drink while we do it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Best of both worlds. So with that being said, let's get to the wine. What wine do we have today, Myra? We are going to do Dark Horse Pinot Grigio. I do love me a Pinot Grigio. Doing Pinot again. Okay. Let's try this. Let's give it a try. We got some nice little skeleton glasses. Yeah, Myra got these. All right. Oh, that one's not bad. Mm-hmm. I like that one. I like it. So we're going to do, if you haven't watched our show before, we taste it, but then we're going to talk about the, the wine ratings and what we like and don't like about it later at the end of the show. Yes. So tonight's discussion is what? We are talking about Harbingers of Death. Again, mm-hmm. if you are new to our channel, like and subscribe, please. Yep, yeah, please. So let's get it started. Sure. What's the first thing you want to discuss? Um, I had to take notes because if you have watched our show before, we like to drink a lot of wine, so sometimes sure you forget. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so notes help, so we stay on track. <laughs> uh, we are going to talk about, well, I will go first because I think you said you had some that you want to mm-hmm. talk about. Okay. So I will start actually a topic that I brought up before, the Mothman prophecies. Mm-hmm. Yes. So... Mothman um, is a association with Harbingers of Death. Um, it stems from the accounts and of it, its appearances preceding tragic events. Mm-hmm. The details about it is um, many reports Mothman sightings in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, um, were followed by catastrophic incidents. So the most infamous of these was the collapse of the Silver Bridge in 1967, resulting in the deaths of 46 people. Mm-hmm. So eyewitnesses were claiming to see the Mothman before tragic events happened. Yes. So and this happened to be right before Christmas. Mm-hmm. So people were doing their Christmas shopping. There was tons of people on this bridge. So, you know, you got to factor that there's um, this bridge is old. Mm-hmm. It's got a lot of cars, tons of people on it during rush hour traffic with people going home. So same thing, um, I believe people claim that he was spotted before the 35W bridge collapse as mm-hmm. well. So Yep, and also um, before um, the Twin Towers went down, mm-hmm. some people, there were pictures. Whether they were real or not, um, I can't say, but there was pictures of the apparent sighting of Mothman. Mm-hmm. flying by the Twin Towers. And before the Point Pleasant one, he was spotted weeks before um, on and off. And that was like chasing cars, supposedly. Mm-hmm. Um, just off on by old like uh, abandoned warehouse, just yep. off the road. And it just kind of became more and more, um, I don't want to say popular, but yeah. people started hearing about it and other people came forward and said they had seen him too. And I feel like it became more popular too when they kind of documented the real life events in that um, Richard Gere movie, mm-hmm. The Mothman Prophecy. Prophecies. So yep. I feel like um, when that was brought up, then people start talking about it and there was like the conspiracy theories. And some mm-hmm. people even think that it's not just like um, your imminent death. It's kind of like an omen, like a warning. Yes. So... And then there's other people on the other side who think it's just a coincidence. So, I don't know. I believe also the Mothman um, has recently been uh, sighted over by O'Hare Airport in Chicago, believe it or not. There are sightings, you guys can actually Google it, that that the Mothman has been seen. But I haven't really heard of any, what am I trying to say, Uh, tragic events. Yeah, and that's the thing is I, I keep trying to search for the pictures that... That because I heard too that there was pictures before the 35W mm-hmm. um, bridge collapse, but I haven't been able to find it. So I mean, and since we're in the Twin Cities, if anybody out there has something they want to say about it, put it on the put it on the comments down below, and I would really like to know if anybody else saw it, what they think about it, yeah. and you know, since we're we're all local here, <laughs> that'd be nice. To, that'd be nice to know if anybody out there has an idea. Right. Um, so moving on. 
what were what you going to talk about? Um, well, I was going to talk about the Wendigo. And I yes. and we had discussed this on a previous episode mm-hmm. that I was telling Myra about like a creepy story that I had. Oh, it was our um it was our uh like what don't you want to like don't what was that? Ooh, the, what it was, was it? Superstition that you yeah, didn't want to do? Yep, what you don't do. Yep. What you don't do. And yep. mine was whistling at night. Um it's just an old like thing in some Asian cultures where you don't whistle at night because you're calling these spirits to you. And Mm -hmm. it led me back to an old story that um, there is a, there is a story in a book called Haunted Heartland. It's called Windigo of the North. And we're not talking about the same Windigo that you guys are probably very familiar with now. Uh, You know, the, the deer headed, like skull, antler, um, tall, um, Mm -hmm. you know, Cannibal, yep. if you will. It's not that same thing. It's described very differently. It is an old Algonquin um, lore. And this, okay, I grew up in Roseau County. I grew up in War Road, way up north Minnesota. Six <laughs> miles from Canada. Up north. Up north, <laughs> yep. And so there is a story about this Wendigo up there. It's called the Wendigo Roseau County. So you can Google that. And there is some stories about it. And it seems to be like a harbinger of death. Apparently, my sister and her boyfriend were out in the farm roads in the middle of the night, <laughs> hanging out, and um, their car broke down, and they needed to walk to a farmhouse to get help. Mm-hmm. Now, this is like in the 80s, so there wasn't like a cell phone or anything handy, and he was um, whistling on their walk along with flicking a, a lighter, mm. and she told him, don't whistle. And she's like, or he was like, oh, why? Is a ghost going to get us or something? <laughs> and so she's like, no, no. And apparently they started seeing this tall white figure out in the middle of the woods kind of like walking along with them. And she, they first thought it was like a deer or something creepy like that. Mm-hmm. And this is, and she didn't know that this is what I think it is by any means. So... They saw this tall white figure. It followed them slowly, got closer to them as they were walking. It was walking at an angle with them, so getting closer. And eventually they turned around and it just wasn't there. My sister told me the story the next day when she got home, after she got all in trouble, of course. And then later, like a year later, I read that story. Mm -hmm. And I asked my sister, I was like, hey, apparently it is a harbinger of death and that um, somebody you might know would pass after that and I asked her if uh, she knew anybody that passed around that time and it's a small town where everybody knows everybody and she said that her boyfriend's like cousin or like relative or somebody did pass away a couple weeks after so that's where we talked about um, talking about harbingers of death again but that's the only area I've ever heard that the Wendigo was a harbinger of death was in that story of the Wendigo of Roseau County. Mm-hmm. All the other ones is always about the cannibal deer antler cryptid. Yeah. So that was one of the ones I wanted to bring up. Yeah. And kind of piggybacking off of that, I was going to actually talk about the Banshee, which mm-hmm. is also similar to that in, in the fact that it's in different cultures. But I think I talked about it before too. Banshee, Banshee is a, the same kind where um, if you hear its wail, it's kind of like you know, a precursor to someone's going to die. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, I think it was an Irish family um, it's, where... Banshees are Irish, and yeah, supposedly so, they only stick with Irish families. Yeah, so that's what they're saying. You have saying. an Irish ba- last name. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... So that's what it's supposed to be, is like someone in your family, your immediate family is mm-hmm. going to die and if you hear that wail, which is kind of creepy when you think about it. Mm-hmm. It's just like... But they they had like a bunch of like scary movies around it and Darby you know. O'Dell and the Little People. Do you remember, remember that movie? That <laughs> it's like an old eighties like leprechaun movie, and at the end there oh, was that banshee yep, that yep, freaked yep. me out. We watched this in elementary school, <laughs> and I remember this crazy banshee lady be like, oh, and and it was, oh it was my scary. Gosh. It was it was a leprechaun movie until it got scary. Oh I mean, my goodness, it was leprechaun too. But um, yeah, so, there is actual. Mm-hmm. You've seen that one, right? Yeah. The Leprechaun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jennifer Aniston was in it. Ugh. That, that was like her, I think, music or movie debut. <laughs> Breaking out. Mm-hmm. Breaking out in Leprechaun. But yeah, that's another one. I mean, it's, and those stories kind of are similar, close in predicting death. So, but anyway. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, one of the other ones I wanted to bring up was a Yuri, um, Japanese. Oh, yes. So, yes. 
If you have ever seen The Grudge or The Ring, I'm sure you all have, I hope. It's like that typical um, creepy woman, long hair, always wearing some creepy white gown. In this particular case, obviously she's Japanese. And supposedly she is, I, I would almost wanna say she's similar to like a banshee in a way, because if you see her or if you encounter her, that she is there as a harbinger of death as well. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of people also say she's the one that's gonna kill you. Yeah. But um, I I really like that. And, and I think there's a lot of sadness to the lore of it because a lot of these um, Yuri's um, spirits are, they're usually like women who have died in a tragic way. You know, they could have been murdered, uh, childbirth, thing, things that's really heavy and that would definitely keep them on this earth yeah. to haunt and make sure everybody else was as miserable as they were in their last moments. And they say that the Oklahoma forest is full of yuris as well. Oh. Hence also maybe why there's also suicide, well, there's all those suicides in yeah. that forest. It's also called Suicide Forest, and that's based at the bottom of Mount Fuji. One of the places I do want to visit, <laughs> um, believe it or not, I do want to go. And Just don't go they, too far in. <laughs> I'll follow, if you follow those strings, because they have those strings that oh, mark. Oh, did they? Yeah, uh, suppose someone actually went in there and marked. Oof. No, it's 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 so people can find them. So if you were someone oh, who was going to to end your life, right. you would you'd walk off the trail, but you'd have a string, and then that would so lead somebody to find you, so your body. they could bury you. It's it's really sad, and maybe that's something we should discuss someday. Is that forest? Yes. But there supposedly is a lot of yuri in that area. And I know that for the history of that part, um, back in the old and ancient um, Japan, a lot of the people, they would send their elderly out there or their sick out there oh. to make it on their own. And, you know, because you're not taking the resources of the village anymore. Everybody was hungry. Yeah. You know, and if you're getting old, like your family isn't going to be able to take care of you as much anymore. So they would send these people out into that forest. And mm, I think that sad. also is, yeah, again, it's, <laughs> it's that whole heavy, sad, and I think that could be a major part as to why there's so much sadness out there and it just makes people depressed and... Well, so you're talking about the Yuri. I wonder, is that kind of similar? Would that be what, um, is it, how do you say it, La Llorona? La Llorona. Yeah. Yep. Is that, would that be kind of the same thing? Or is she like a completely different type she, of... She's a different type. Okay. Um, she is more of a lore to um, keep children away from rivers. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I think, I'm, I, I actually think, I believe in her. Because they call her the Wailing Woman, too. Yep, she's a Wailing Woman. So if you guys haven't seen La Llorona either, um, her story is there's this beautiful young woman got um, married this wealthy yep. man and had, had a great life and um, had a couple children with him. And apparently one day he's, he's kind of, found somebody younger and prettier and kind of like leaves her to be with this other person. And in her rage, she decided to um, drown her children, mm -hmm. his children, in the river. And then when she realizes what she's done, mm -hmm. she kills herself. And yeah. now she's like this wailing woman, so La Llorona, um, yeah. searching for her children yep. that she has murdered. So and a lot of mm -hmm. the well, a lot of the scary movies around mm -hmm. it will show that she's like because she's searching for her kids, she takes other people's kids yes. and like tries to yep yep. And so. so if the children are playing around rivers, especially at night, walking home, all that stuff, same stuff my parents would have told me, I'm sure, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, was was like, hey, be careful because La Llorona can get you, mm -hmm. and you know that's that's a, enough to keep me away from certain areas for sure. And even as an adult, yep, <laughs> keep me yep. away. And people, even adults, cross her path, and they see her crying, and they want to help her. Mm -hmm. Don't go help a crying woman in the middle of the Especially night. Especially if you can't see her face, her yep. back's towards you. Mm -hmm. She looks like she's wet. Just let it go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> call, call someone. Let it go. <laughs> call someone. So, but I don't know if she fits into like a harbinger of death, or if she just means if you see her as maybe a small child to be mm -hmm. aware. That, yeah. that stay away because she could be taking you to your death. Kind of like a, a cautionary tale. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that makes a lot of sense for whether it's true or not that parents would say something like that. It's scary, I know, but I think it makes a lot of sense <laughs> to keep your children away from certain areas. If your children don't know how to swim, don't go near the river. Right. 
So what other ones you got? Um, well, another one that I kind of want to talk about, and it's kind of borderline, it's hellhounds. Mm -hmm. So a lot yes. of people sometimes talk about how um, they see the spectral dog, um, black, mm -hmm. glowing eyes. And it was supposed to be like the guarding of the gates of hell. hell so mm -hmm. not allowing anyone out or anyone in who wasn't supposed to. But some other people have said that... Um, They'll see it as kind of like a omen or a precursor to yes someone dying. Mm -hmm. So that that was another one that I wanted to talk about. What are your thoughts on that? Yes, I have lots of thoughts about that because Yay. it is okay. <laughs> when I was um, traveling in the UK, that was one of the main, big stories when we I had gone on like a ghost tour, and we went to all these areas, and it's kind of like middle lower England. It's a little bit like east northeast of london but that area apparently it's called the black shook mm -hmm. um so i think i don't remember what the shook means but um it's a black dog mm -hmm. but i could just describe it as a hellhound because i think everybody kind of knows what that is a little bit more sometimes seen to be red eyes so if you encounter it or if you hear it um like howling or barking in the middle of the night. Yep. Huge, almost like werewolf-like, but not a werewolf. On um, like the moors of like, you know, mm -hmm. the British countryside. And apparently it is a harbinger of death. And it's, but it's a harbinger of death for the person who saw it, not really like someone you might know or right. something like that. But I'm like, well, I guess, did you make a deal with the devil and maybe it's back and that's why it's like a right. harbinger of death? <laughs> like a lot of these things that are harbingers of death also seem to be coming after you for the most part. Right. Like the Yuri and the Black Shook and, <laughs> I, you know, maybe maybe the Banshee's a little different. It could be anyone. Yeah. And that, and uh, going along those lines is um, it's usually if it's coming after you, you're the only one who can see it. So yes. like if you're with someone and you're like, you see that <laughs> big black dog? Mm -hmm. They're like, no, what are you talking about? Yeah, that means you're going to die. <laughs> yeah, it, it's Most you. Most likely. <laughs> and I think it was mentioned, um, too, in um, The Hound of the Baskervilles, if you remember mm -hmm. that. Yes, I do. So, yeah. So, that was another one. Yeah. Do we have any more to discuss? Not unless you have anything. I think that was pretty I much it for... Those were the ones that we could... Oh, owls! Yeah. I wanted to talk about owls. Everybody has seen an owl, right? In, yeah. Yes. But okay, so the owl thing. I was looking it up because I it's always kind of been in the back of my mind as mm -hmm. something as a as a harbinger of death. But their owls have so many different meanings. There's like it, every different culture has different meanings. Yeah. And one of the things that I knew of is in my culture, if you if you saw like an owl like hooting at night, especially a white one, um, it was like somebody you knew was gonna be passing. Oh so, I didn't so, know that. Yeah, and, and I think part of it I couldn't explain it, what that means in like the Laotian culture, but I know that when I was looking some of it up, it was like, oh, it wants to like carry your soul away mm -hmm. or somebody's soul away. And I've personally just felt like I've had a couple of these experiences where I've like heard an owl hooting or something like that. And I've, I've there's been times where I'm pointed out and I'll be like, and maybe it's also because I notice it because maybe someone in my life is on you know in the hospital mm -hmm. they're not getting better getting close yeah yep so there were some cases of that yeah but i think i mean i think i've encountered it about three times in my life that i feel like i heard the owl hooting and that somebody i knew was gonna be passing away or i couldn't really think of an example right now of um anybody that passed surprisingly well now i am like trying to rack my brain because i you know every once in a while especially when i'm up north mm -hmm. like i'll hear an owl hoot so then yeah. i'm like now i'm thinking i'm like wow did someone pass away that i just didn't like realize it or someone close to me pass away and didn't put the connection because mm -hmm. i didn't even know that was kind of a, a sign thing? yeah because yeah. you know owls are supposed to be so magical and majestic and mm -hmm. you think of they harry potter <laughs> <laughs> just bringing you a letter of goodness. They're just bringing you a letter. You're not going to die. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> but were they hooting? <laughs> no. There you go. Oh. Were they? I don't think I remember. H H Hedwig? 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 I don't think I, I don't, remember. Did he hoot and then bring mm -mm. you a letter? But no. how many people died in Harry Potter anyway? A lot. <laughs> a lot of people. But yes, <laughs> so um, those are some of the harbingers of death that I wanted to discuss on this episode. Yeah. If you have any comments or any um, Harpingers of Death that you think yeah. we should have brought up or that you want to put in the comments below, please feel free to share. I would love share. to hear it. Besides Death himself. Because, you know, <laughs> oh, he's, yeah. he's there to, like, you know, take you to the other side. And 
help you, you know, along. He, he's just doing his job. It's not his fault. But so, should we get to the wine rating? Yeah. So again, Dark Horse Pinot Grigio. This is what we're rating. Okay. Let's tr let's uh, take a swig of this again. So what are you gonna give it out of five? Out of five, I'm gonna give this one about a three and a half. Mainly because as a Pinot Grigio, it's I like it to be a little sweeter. Mm -hmm. It's not as sweet as I'd like. So, yeah. but but it has it has a really good taste afterwards. Mm -hmm. So when you when you first sip it, it's not. Oh, like... interesting. Mine is kind of flipped a little bit. Okay. Like I I'm gonna give it a three. Okay. But mine it, like the initial taste isn't that bad. It's kind of like um got a, like a citrusy like acidic taste to it. Mm -hmm. But I don't really care for the aftertaste. It tastes kind of um. I'm trying to think of a word for it. It's just weird. It just, it feels like it, if it makes sense, it feels like it falls off. I feel, okay, I feel like. Like you like, get this nice rise and then it's just like, okay. bleh. I feel like the grapes, <laughs> um, the grape taste, if you will, is like a green grape that hasn't quite ripened yet. They mm -hmm. picked it a little too early. Yep. And then they had squished it. <laughs> And made some wine, Squished and then threw it in like, the bottle. Yeah. They're like, yeah. ah, you're ready. I mean, but I, but I do, I do stand by my rating. I'm just saying that mm -hmm. that taste isn't necessarily bad for me. But it's, yeah. it loses its sweetness because I feel like the grapes ma making this wine were not as sweet as they could have been. Right, and yeah. I mean, it's it's good, but would I buy it again? Mm. I would buy a different Pinot Grigio if I yeah. could choose. But I think overall, it's pretty good. Yeah. So. That's all we yes. got. That's all we got. All right. Thank you, and we'll see, see you on, on the, the other side. side.